Let's do another example, this time with a different sugar. So step one, I'm going to number just like before from top to bottom. And this time you can tell that we have a pentose. So this is going to be different because it's a pentose, but it's still an aldose. Step two, I'm going to redraw. So just like before, I'm going to copy and paste and rotate 90 degrees to the right. Okay, you will have to renumber. My numbers just stayed with my drawing. Step three, I'm going to draw a bond from the last OH on a car chiral carbon to my carbonyl carbon. So there it is, my bond. And step four, erase the double bond. Again, this is going to automatically give me an OH. So I'm going to turn my hydrogen into a red hydrogen and erase the hydrogen on the red oxygen. Okay, so we have connected the oxygen and the carbonyl carbon, gotten rid of the double bond here, and moved the hydrogen from this oxygen to this oxygen. So now we're on step six, count the atoms in the ring. Start with the oxygen. This is my ring, and again, this group here, carbon five, is not included in the ring. So I have one, two, three, four, five atoms this time. That is the difference between the aldohexose and the aldopentose. I only have a five-membered ring. So now I'm going to draw my ring. So I'm on step seven. And I'm going to draw it again so it looks like it's looking straight on the side of the ring. Oxygen in the back right corner again. And that oxygen is my red oxygen. Now I need to assign the numbers. Looking at my red oxygen, you can see that it is attached to carbon 1 and carbon 4. And I'm going to use the same convention. Put carbon 1 in the front right and carbon 4 in the back left. Obviously carbons 2 and 3 are in between in order, so we'll put them in there. Okay, and I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see it better. A little bit bigger still. There we go. Alright, step 8 is to add the hydroxyl groups and the hydrogens if you want to, but again I'm going to leave the hydrogens off because that makes the drawing confusing and messy. I'm going to skip the anomeric carbon because that's step 10. So if I look at carbon 2 on my sideways drawing, the OH is down. If I look at carbon 3, the OH is also down. So far all our OHs have been down. Alright, so they're both down. Now I move on to step 9. Look and see whether my sugar is D or L. I'm looking again at the same OH that I connected to the carbonyl, the one on the last chiral carbon, or the second to last one. It's on the right again, so this is another D sugar. So that means that my CH2OH is again up. So that's carbon 5. Okay, so that's up. We're almost done. We need to put our OH on our anomeric carbon. The anomeric carbon, if you don't remember, is the one that used to be the carbonyl carbon. It's the only carbon in our sugar that has two bonds to oxygen. Again, I'm going to show you both alpha and beta because it's easy to copy and paste. If I make the OH up so that it is cis to my CH2OH, 
then we have alpha. I'm sorry, beta. Both up is beta. They both start with B. Both up, B, beta. And just to let you know, this oxygen is my blue oxygen, and this hydrogen is my red hydrogen, just so you know what happened to them. Alpha, they are trans. So my OH on my, uh, on my anamire carbon and my CH2OH are on opposite sides of the ring. They are trans, so that is alpha.